We are now just nine days away from the 2020 NHL trade deadline, a day that I'm sure most hockey fans have circled on the calendar. Whether you're a fan of a contending team looking to add talent for a playoff run or a rebuilding team looking to sell off assets for picks and prospects, it's definitely one of the most exciting times of the year. We have had some pretty big trades on deadline day over the years. We had the Mark Stone trade last year and then the Ryan McDonough trade the year before that, and those are just some of the more recent ones. Ones. and since we are getting closer to deadline day i thought i might as well make a video to get in the trade spirit so for today's video we are talking about the craziest deadline deals in nhl history and of course if you guys want to see more nhl videos like this make sure to click that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you never miss a video to kick off the video we are going to go all the way back to the deadline on march 4th of 1991 when the hartford whalers traded their franchise player to the pittsburgh penguins the full details on the trade were the Pittsburgh Penguins acquire Ron Francis, Grant Jennings, and Ulf Samuelson from the Whalers in exchange for John Cullen, Jeff Parker, and Zarly Zalapski, which is an unreal hockey name by the way. Looking back at the trade, it is strange that the Whalers traded their franchise player who at the time of the trade had a total of 821 points in 714 games with the franchise, and he also served as the captain from 1985 up until he was stripped of the sea on December 7th of the season in which he was traded in. And of course, that didn't sit well with Ron, and I'm sure it was a big reason the Whalers decided to part ways with him. The big piece going back to Hartford in the trade was centerman John Cullen, who had 94 points in 65 games before the deadline with the Penguins. The Whalers also viewed defenseman Zarly Zalapski as an extremely valuable piece coming back the other way, and he would go on to have some fantastic offensive years from the blue line after the trade. It wasn't an awful return for Hartford considering they traded away their franchise cornerstone, but John Culling was pretty underwhelming in his time with the Whalers, and Cullen would end up being traded a year and a half later to the Maple Leafs for a second round pick, and the pick didn't really amount to anything. I think it's safe to say the biggest winner from this trade was Ron Francis himself, considering in his nine and a half seasons spent with Hartford, they only made the playoffs five times and they never passed the second round. But Francis went on to win back-to-back -back Stanley Cups with Pittsburgh and was a big part of it with 44 points in 45 total playoff games en route to those Stanley Cups. And everything would come full circle for Ron Francis, as he would sign with his original franchise, then Hartford, now Carolina, and played a pretty big role in the team making it all the way to the Stanley Cup final in the 2002 playoffs. The Canes would eventually trade Francis on March 9th of 2004 in exchange for a fourth round pick which winded up being Jared Bowl and Francis would only play 12 games with the Leafs before retiring from the NHL as a player for good. Finishing his career with 1,798 points in 1,731 games and on November 12th of 2007 Francis was inducted into the hockey hall of fame he is also currently the general manager of the expansion franchise in seattle that is set to come into the league for the 2021-22 season the next trade we have to talk about came on february 26th of 2008 when the tampa bay lightning traded star center brad richards along with johan holmquist to the dallas stars in exchange for uc okinen mike smith jeff halpern and a 2009 fourth round pick that turned out to be kyle bigos richards had a total of 489 points in 500 52 games over seven seasons with the Tampa Bay Lightning before this trade. He also played a massive role in the team's 2004 Stanley Cup win, putting up 26 points in 23 games, which was good enough to earn him the Conn Smythe as playoffs MVP. After the trade, Richards had a fantastic start with Dallas, putting up five assists in his first game, which is a franchise record for most assists in a player's first game with the team. And as we all know, Dallas would eventually lose Richards for nothing as he signed as a free agent to that massive contract with the New York Rangers in the summer of 2011. And looking at how the deal to know for Tampa, well it definitely wasn't anything special, Mike Smith was pretty mediocre for the team during his three and a half seasons, and UC Jokinen's tenure with the team lasted all but a year and a half, and was filled with injuries, and Jeff Halpern only played two and a half seasons with Tampa, and was more so just a utility forward for them. Looking back at this trade, I'd probably give the win to Dallas, considering Richards did give the Stars a 91 
point season and played a big role in the team's playoff run in 2008. Honestly, neither team really made out like bandits in this trade, but at the time, it was a massive deal. Moving on now to the next trade, we have to go back to the March 13th deadline of 2001, when the Phoenix Coyotes traded Keith Kachuk to the Blues in exchange for Michael Hanzus, Ladislav Nagy, and a 2002 first rounder, which ended up being Ben Eager, and also the rights to Jeff Taffy. Looking back at this trade, I think I would have to say the St. Louis Blues come out on top, landing a 28-year-old power forward who could put up a ton of points, but the trade wasn't as lopsided as you may think. Kachuk wasn't able to produce offensively in St. Louis like he did with the Coyotes, but he was still a damn good player for the Blues after the trade. Kachuk put up a total of 288 points in his first stint with the Blues before then being traded as a rental on February 25th of 2007 to the Thrashers, before then re-signing with the Blues the following summer where he played out the final years of his career. And then seeing how the trade turned out for the Yotes, well, Hanzus lasted all but a year before then being traded to the Flyers for Brian Boucher in a third round pick, and Ladislav Nagy on the other hand actually had some really good years with the Coyotes. From 2001 to 2007, Nagy put up a total of 249 points, but ultimately didn't have a long NHL career, as Nagy would then go play in Europe from 2008 to 2019. And the pick that became Ben Eager, well, he never played a game for Phoenix. The next trade took place on March 7th of 1988, when the Calgary Flames sent a young Brett Hull along with Steve Bozek to the Blues in exchange for Rob Bramage and Rick Wamsley. Yeah, this is far and away the most lopsided trade of the video, but it is really just crazy considering the fact that Brett Hull went on to score over 700 career goals and just under 1,400 career points. And of course, hindsight is always 2020, and the Flames obviously had no idea Hall would turn into a Hall of Famer, but man, this trade turned out to be bad for them. Rob Ramage only ended up playing one full season for Calgary before they then traded him to the Leafs for a second round pick, which turned into Kent Manderville, who didn't turn into anything for Calgary. In the Brett Hall trade, the Flames also, like I mentioned, got goaltender Rick Wamsley, who did have a couple of okay seasons with Calgary, but that's it. All in all, it was an extremely underwhelming package considering how it turned out for St. Louis on the other hand, but like I said, nobody could have known, and that is just the risk you take when you trade away either draft picks or young players. And now for the final trade of the video, we're going to talk about a more recent one that took place on March 4th of 2014 when the Vancouver Canucks traded goaltender Roberto Luongo and Stephen Anthony to the Panthers for Jacob Markstrom and Sean Mathias. Now this trade was a tough pill to swallow for Canucks fans as Luongo was a fan favorite and spent eight years in Vancouver and backstopped the franchise to their only Stanley Cup final appearance back in 2011. And it honestly came out of nowhere, even Luongo himself came out and said he was very shocked. But there definitely was some tension between him and the team after Canucks head coach at the time, John Tortorella started goaltender Eddie Lack over Luongo in the 2014 Heritage Classic game. Luongo didn't take too kindly to this and would then be traded to Florida just two days later. He later said in an interview that there's no hiding it, I wanted to play in that game. Now, Luongo's contract did make a deal tougher to come by, even Luongo knew his contract wasn't great. My contract sucks. <laughs> so the Canucks had to retain 15% of Luongo's remaining salary to make a deal work, and the Canucks are actually still paying for that today. Now at the time of the deal, Luongo was turning 35 years old, but obviously Florida thought he could still be a solid goaltender for them, and he definitely was when he was healthy, but the problem was the older he got, the harder it was for him to stay in the net. Luongo did eventually retire after this past season, and his storied 19-year career came to an end. Now this trade definitely has worked out in the long haul for the Canucks, even though they are still paying Luongo a little bit, Jacob Markstrom has been fantastic for them over the past two years and was even named to the All-Star team this season. So that is going to do it for all the trades in today's video. Now, like I said at the start, there have been a ton of massive trades over the years, and I probably could have made this into like a top 20, but these were just some of the ones that I wanted to talk about. So thank you guys all so much for watching, and make sure to let me know down in the comment section if you have any predictions for this up-and-coming trade deadline. 
Also, make sure to let me know what you guys want to see from me video-wise for this trade deadline because I'm going to be up throughout the whole day watching Trade Center, so I would be able to get videos out on every individual trade right away. I have done it that way over the past two years where I just made an individual quick video on every trade, but I feel like it might be better to just do an entire trade deadline recap at the end of the day, so make sure to let me know down in the comment section below what you'd prefer. And with all that being said, I really hope you guys all enjoyed today's video. If you did, please make sure to go down there and drop a like on it. And if you guys do want to see more NHL content like this, make sure to click that subscribe button. And I will see you guys all in the next video.